Sports Illustrated put five coaches on the hot seat, but how hot are these seats really? Lane College upsets Tennessee State while North Carolina A&T has a statement victory over Bryant. Oh yeah, it's Locked on HBCU. Play my music. You are Locked on HBCU, your daily podcast covering HBCU sports. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What's going on, family? Welcome back to another episode of the Locked On HBCU podcast, your number one. Daily one-stop shop for everything HBCU athletics, Monday through Friday, part of the Locked On podcast network, your team every day. And I, of course, am Darian Gray, a.k.a. the Mouth of the South, Texas Southern alum and former TSU Herald Sports editor. Thank you for going on this journey with me, making Locked On HBCU your first listen of the day every day and remember just because the mic cuts off does not mean that the journey is over it just means it's time to follow me on twitter at south exclusives in today's episode of locked on hbcu is sponsored by simply safe home security with fast protect technology exclusively from simply safe 24 7 monitoring agents are going to capture evidence that accurately verifies a threat for faster police response there's no safe like simply safe visit simplysafe.com slash locked on college to learn more sports illustrated had a very very interesting piece and it was written by kyle t mosley who puts up a lot of great pieces and i've read multiple articles that have turned into topics on here this is just the first direct reference to it and that's the fact that he put five hbcu coaches on the hot seat and honestly i don't know how hot these seats are i'm going to tell you remember this is not my list if you hear your coach on this list i did not create it do not be mad at me now you can be mad at how hot i said his seat was but do not be mad that he is on this list i am only reacting with that being said and disclaimers over with Let's go ahead and go with Norfolk State's Dawson Odoms. I think his, his hot seat's pretty, it's low medium. I would say it's low medium. Um, overall, I felt as if he came over from Southern with a little bit of leverage. You got to understand, Southern was a very successful program underneath Odoms. And that's who Norfolk State got. That's who Norfolk State wanted. Let's say that because... Some people might have argument, and the reason he's on this is because he probably didn't live up to some people's expectations of what he was going to be, right? But the thing you have to remember is that he still was that guy, and that gives you a certain amount of leverage. And when having these conversations about how hot somebody's seat is, you kind of got to step away. I understand that Norfolk State opened up this year 0-5, but last year when they had Jawan Carter, they were in the mix. You know, they weren't one or two. They weren't Central to South Carolina State, but they were in the mix. You wouldn't have had a conversation about Odom's getting fired after last year. Now, the reason I have it at low medium is because, and that's kind of like Louisiana rub, right? If you're going to wing stop or, or pluck it, it might be pluck it. I'm not the biggest wing guy, so I'm not going to make all of these wing references, but some of them I will. Man, you're looking at a situation where you got to give a guy another year. He had a solid year. He was somebody you really wanted, probably. You got him to leave his other job and on the same level. So he was somebody you wanted. He had a, a decent year. He's had a bad year. If this persists into conference play, then we might turn up the temperature a little bit. But overall, you got one decent year, one bad year. You he I don't think he's in real danger of losing his job this year. Now, you go to one that's pretty close and near and dear to my heart. I think y'all know what this is going to be. Y'all see it back there. I'll reference it every time. That's Texas Southern. Clarence McKinney. And his hot seat is nuclear. I'm going to say it. I, I was saying it at first. And listen, I have grown to appreciate Clarence McKinney. And uh, the way I speak about him is much different than it was when he first was hired or his first season. I was there when he was first hired. Didn't win a game that year. And I was calling for his head then. I was calling for his head at that time, um, mostly because I was I was kind of hurt. You know, it's my last season. Well, it was really my first season covering football. 
This is my last year at college, so I was disappointed to not win a game. Um, but overall, I was like, man, you went winless. I just don't know. And I was called premature. And you know what? I might have been. I'll be honest. Um, and as, as time has gone on and I've seen the respect that he gets from people who are closer to the to the program, I changed my tune. However, the results are the results. And one thing that we have to understand is that Andrew Body and the offense have not been flowing in the way that we want them to this year. And that's going to fall on McKinney. I understand he's not calling the plays, but if my memory serves me right, he was a running backs coach. So with him being an offensive guy, a lot of this is going to fall on him. Now, there is always this possibility. It's not what I believe is the truth, but there's always this possibility. Andrew Body could not be as good as we think. That could be true. I don't think it's the case. You know, I'm pretty confident that Andrew Body is a talented quarterback. But I'll tell you what I'm most confident in. Because even if you want to dispute that, Andrew Body's expiration date comes after Clarence McKinney's expiration date. I just do not believe that if this offense doesn't get it going, Andrew Body is going to be here for four years. God willing, right? So hopefully he stays a Tiger for four years. He's been here for two. It means he got two more left. If they don't get it going by the end of this year, are you going to waste Andrew Body's junior year hoping that things get better? I wouldn't. I think that if the offense doesn't get to clicking, he's going to be gone. So I'm going to say nuclear because I think of everybody on this list, he has the greatest chance of being fired after this year. So he has a very hot seat to me. Because you have to remember, he was there two years before Body. So it's not like Andrew Body got there. No, maybe it was one year before Body. I don't know. That pandemic year is weird. So I think it was one season in a spring year. But, um, yeah, I don't think that he's going to do that. The lack of success mixed with the higher expectations for your quarterback not being met. Yeah, it's going to end up with a firing. Uh, let's get to Grambling's Hugh Jackson. That's lemon pepper. No heat. I don't think there's any amount of heat on him. Here's the thing. I think Hugh came in with a ridiculously, ridiculously long leash. Things might have been ate at. You know, you had the whole Art Brow situation. I don't know if he's going to be the guy who takes most of the responsibility for that or maybe somebody else. But I do believe that it was an Hugh Jackson hiring. All right. Now you're starting off pretty bad. You, you're not making second half adjustments, but you're just eating at a leash. You got to give him some more time. I wouldn't want to fire Hugh Jackson after this, this year. And this is coming from somebody who said that if Hugh Jackson doesn't succeed here, his head coaching run is done. So this isn't somebody who's just a Hugh apologist. I, I like to think I keep it real. And keeping it real, I don't think that um, six games is enough time to really decide that he needs to go. Therefore, he has very little heat on him. Eddie George, a little bit more, right? Meet low, high, low. I don't know. The upper low, whatever, however you want to phrase it, right? A little bit of heat, one, one flame on the menu. And that's because he is a part of the longest Tennessee State losing streak in nearly 30 years. We're looking at 26 years. The last six games of 95 and the first game of 96. And now you're going through a similar stretch where you're just losing and you're losing bad to the lane. We're going to talk about that in a second. But overall, you're, you're Eddie George, right? You are a high profile hire and you have been a part of major decisions going forward. You have Notre Dame that's going to be on the, on the schedule. North Dakota State is going to be on the schedule. Uh, I wouldn't be shocked if Ohio State is soon on the schedule, right? And we're assuming they're going to get some big money for these things. I think Notre Dame is paying out like a hefty payment. Um, I wouldn't be shocked if they do go to Ohio State. They would also get a hefty payment. He's a part of future decision making. When we talk about Tennessee State leaving the OVC, it's because Eddie George came out and said, we're looking for a new house. Eddie George is connected to the future of Tennessee State, which is why I don't really think that he's high on this list. That's my personal opinion on it. And then lastly, we're going to go with Vincent Dancy. And I want to tell me, I want you guys to rank these guys. I'm going to rank them as well. Vincent Dancy at Mississippi Valley State has a very similar situation to Clarence McKinney at Texas Southern. However, he wins or he, excuse me, the tone around him is different and he has increased his wins on a yearly basis. 
Um, and I think that's the reason the tone is a little bit different. Um, I think McKinney, McKinney might have went up every year. But the tone around him isn't one where people are high, you know, and I believe it's because not only are the winds going up on a yearly basis. Also, you can point a lot of fingers at Mississippi Valley State. You can sit there and say they don't have the resources. They don't have this, that, the third. You probably point at a couple of fingers or pointing a couple of fingers before you get back to Coach Dancy. And with that being the case, you ain't the one on the front line. The ones on the front line always get shot down first. So there's probably some more layers that have to be peeled until people start saying, yeah, we want his job. That's why I think he's safe. But you have to remember the success is the success. And he's won seven games. He's went up every year, but he started off 0-5 this year. I don't know if they can get to three. And I don't know if three even saves his job. He went from one to two to four. Now step down to three. This was the hardest one because I don't know how hot his seat is. I'm going to say medium only because you would think it should be hot. However, it just does not feel as if that is the case. It feels like there's a lot of love for Coach Dancy in Mississippi Valley. So I'm going to go with medium. If I had to rank these guys from the least amount of pressure to most amount of pressure, it's going to go Hugh Jackson, Eddie George, Dawson Odoms, Vincent Dancy, and then Clarence McKinney. That's my that's my ranking. So let me know what you guys think. Um I would love for McKinney to get off the hot seat and not by getting fired, by getting things together. I don't want to see him fired because that means my team is not doing well. I'll leave it at that. But going forward, I want to talk about the improbable yet not too surprising, I guess. Nah, I forget. This was this was crazy. I didn't see this coming. You had Lane College knocking off Tennessee State, and I want to talk about that as we continue with Locked on HBCU. But first, let me tell you about Simply Safe because the numbers don't lie in the last decade. Over 4 million people have chosen Simply Safe home security to protect their homes. You don't earn that kind of trust by having lackluster service. You don't earn that kind of trust by your system always getting hacked. You don't get that kind of stuff, right? You have to be doing something right. At Simply Safe, your safely your safety is the only thing that matters, and I know because I use Simply Safe in my own home. They protect you with cutting edge security technology powered by 24 seven power professional monitoring agents who always have your back. And here's why I love it. Listen, I can look at all of the cameras around the house. I can mess with my system and get every. Oh, man, I forgot to turn off my turn on my alarm. Go ahead and set it up with my phone. It's really easy and it's simple. Even if you can't get home right away or if you can't be reached, they're going to make sure that the authorities get out there as soon as a threat is detected. Customize your perfect system for your home in just a few minutes at simplysafe.com slash locked on college. Save 20% on your Simply Safe security system when you sign up for an, an interactive monitoring plan and get your first month free. Visit simplysafe.com slash locked on college to learn more. There is no safe like Simply Safe. As we keep on rolling on today's episode of Locked on HBCU, I appreciate you for making us your first listen of the day. Every day in today's word of the day is languid, meaning showing or having very little strength, energy, or activity. And I want to talk about Lane College because, oh my gosh, Lane College pulled off, I got to say this is a top three victory this year for the HBCU landscape. Um, I came on here after Union knocked off. Valdosta State, and I said, that's number one. That's still my one. I will st- I will say that. That's still my number one. However, I do think that this is in the top three. It's Union over Valdosta. It's Jackson State over FAMU, and then it's this game right here, Lane College over Tennessee State, because it is such an upset. It's a game that Tennessee State was missing quite a few offensive players, but I, I think you'll struggle to find too many people who were saying, yeah, even with those players missing, Tennessee State was still going to win that game. I think that was the popular opinion. And this is a game that I didn't see coming. I'll be completely transparent with you guys because we're family, right? So let me be all the way 100. I I went to sleep. I missed it. All right, after that Benedict College versus Fort Valley State game, I decided to take myself a little nap because I was a little tired. I ain't going to lie to you. I was a little bit tired, and I didn't want to be tired during the Grambling Prairie View game. So I took myself a little nap. I woke up. I looked at my phone. It didn't even register to me. I'm like, oh, man, Tennessee State barely got away with that one. I guess I I woke up and my, my whole 
vision was backwards. And it was actually 28-27 for Lane College. They won at the end of the game going for two. By the way, shout out, man. Kudos to him because that took some that took some gusto, right? That was definitely a, a decision that was not easy to make. But I think it was the right one because overall, you lose to Tennessee State because you missed a two-point conversion. Shrugs. Like, who, who really cares? Like, who is really sitting there saying, man, you shouldn't have went for that? No, when you're the underdog and you're in a game like this that you probably did not expect yourself to be in and you have a chance to go and win it, you go and you win it. And I think it was the right call in overtime to go for two points because, like I said, I think that overall the reward outweighed the risk. So it made it, it made perfect sense to me, right? But when you look at this, this is actually the continuation of a really good year for Lane. You know, this is probably a victory that's going to put them in front of more eyes. More people are going to pay attention. And I, you see that a lot with some of these D2 schools, right? So Bowie State, they were just dominant. And I think they've been dominant for years. So you take out 2000, 2021 Bowie State, take them out of the equation. But Union had to go and beat Valdosta, right? They had to have that victory for some people to pay attention. Albany State has been good for a while. And I think they might have the same type of treatment as Bowie without the playoff success. But you look at Benedict and Fort Valley, if that game wasn't a, a, a battle of undefeated, I don't know if either one of them are getting the credit that they had before the game. So I think a lot of times with some of these D2 programs, you knock off somebody major, you have a big time victory, and now people are paying attention. And for Lane, that big time victory came at the hands of Tennessee State. So as much shout out to them, but let's go over this, their whole season. They lost their first two games to University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff and then also Benedict College. Um, after that, they won three in a row, right? So those first two victories or those first two losses, they came at the hands of a FCS team in University of Arkansas Pine Bluff, but they were going hand in or toe-to-toe. -to -toe. They were battling it out, 42-48. They lost in a shootout, so we know their offense can put up some points, right? That's number one. Then you go to Benedict who we just talked about. We saw how that game happened on Saturday against Fort Valley. It didn't happen anywhere like that against Lane. The final score was 14-0. to And matter of fact, this goes to talk about how good the defense is because the defense has been locked down since that UAPB game. And that was week one. After that, the Lane College defense has been, oh my gosh, spectacular, right? So you go against Benedict College, who we just saw light up and run down the throat of Fort Valley. Well, when it came to going against Lane, there wasn't any of that. They scored 14 points on the day. One was a defensive touchdown, and the other one was a seven-yard drive. Yes, two plays, seven yards. That was the extent of the touchdown drive. So when you really look at it, it was the Benedict defense, which was really good. But that isn't a knock on the Lane defense. The fact that they were able to keep this offense so bottled up is quite a sign that they are a dominant defense. Then you go through the next couple of games, six points, nine points. They allow 28 points to Tennessee State. However, you have to remember, they're going up a division. All of these things matter. Let's continue to make sure we're giving out the proper context. So after those first two victories, or those first two losses, excuse me, they had three straight victories in three straight, after the first loss, three straight dominant defensive performances. You can't classify that as this, but... You're going against an FCS opponent, so I'm not really holding that against you, right? Um, it's like CeeLo said, you shouldn't hold that against me, though. Why not? Because it's an FCS opponent, right? I ain't got no rhyme for it. I ain't about to try to uh, uh, spin, get up, and get out, and get something. I ain't going to do that. But the case is, in a game where Tennessee State was missing their starting quarterback, they were missing their starting running back, and they were missing two receivers, you took advantage. Injuries happen. Injuries happen. I listen to uh, the Pivot podcast all the time. Ryan Clark always said, I didn't need the other team's best. I didn't need you to be at your best because a win is a win. I just wanted to win the game. And that's what happens with Lane. And even with those, those injuries, you're not feeling like Tennessee State should have lost this game or expecting them to lose the game. I understand why they did, but there was two major defensive performances or defensive plays, right? Because let's continue that theme. The strong defense of Lane College is what's going to keep them Keep them active throughout the rest of the season. They had a fumble return and they had an interception return, both for touchdowns. Now, of course, they both came on the quarterback and you can scream, well, that's not Draylon Ellis. That's okay because ball security is ball security. At least on that fumble recovery, 
touchdown, you could at least say, all right, Draylon Ellis or no Draylon Ellis, that's a good defensive play. You might be able to write off the interception or whatever. I'm not. Those are two great defensive plays, and they just showcase how good that lane defense is. And I'll mention it really quickly about Tennessee State, but we've already talked about Eddie George, so I don't want to go too deep into this. However, I don't care that all four of these people were missing. And I, I rewind, 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 rewind. These players missing is a major deal. I will not undersell the impact of missing four key contributors on your on your at your skill position on offense. I will not, right? I will not deny that. However, you're still supposed to, to win this game, and now you're sitting at 0-4. And, and the reason I wanted to bring up Tennessee State and their performance here is because one of our viewers, man, they gave a great point that truth be told, I wasn't trying to hear. I wasn't trying to hear that. Um, I'm just going to be honest with you. I don't think I responded. I don't plan on responding, but I will address the fact that he made a phenomenal point. And that's Sonic Boom. You might see him in the comments here. Um, he's liable to be in any comment section. Love you. You, man, supporter for real, right? But he made a, a, a point about basically we're putting too much stock into looking good in defeat. And we do that. And I'm not going to lie to you. I will probably still put a little bit. However, his comment in the last couple of weeks do have me a tad bit hesitant on how much stock I should put in, in looking good in defeat. See, we say, okay, you look good in defeat. What will you do in other games against more even competition? We did it with Texas Southern. I did it with, with Texas Southern. I'll be honest. We did that with Tennessee State. Oh, they looked good in defeat against Jackson State and Eastern Washington, two teams that they're probably punching up to. So now they're going to look good the rest of the season. Well, look at us. We're here talking about both of these teams' coaches on the hot seat, giving them different levels of heat. However, they both come back and they lose, one to Lane College and one to Alabama State. So maybe, just maybe, Brother Boone was correct in saying that, yeah, we shouldn't be putting this much stock into looking good in defeat. And going forward, we're going to talk about a team that they didn't look too good in defeat. Not the first couple of weeks, but they have looked good in victory. And that's the North Carolina a and Aggies. And I want to talk about them. But before I do that, I would love to tell you about Built Bar because, and this one for my boy who said he hasn't heard about Built Bar in a while, I'm coming to you guys with, with uh, cookie dough puffs. Oh, my gosh. These puffs are so delicious. They're so chewy. They're so easy, right? Because you have some chocolate bars out here that they just they just hard to get down. But that's the difference because this is not a chocolate bar. This is a protein bar that tastes like a candy bar. So many delicious flavors and cookie dough is just one of many. And in addition to the flavor, you're also going to have all the health benefits. So you have high protein, you have low fat, low sugar. These things are amazing and they're amazing for you. If you don't get the puffs, get the regulars. Um, I think they might still have the crisp out there. The crisp are really good. Underrated. I don't hear enough people talk about those built bar uh, crisps. Man, I love Built Bar so much. A friend of mine drove through the city. I said, you got to stop so I can give you and your lady a nice cookies and cream Built Bar. I stand by Built Bar, the best protein bar on the market, bar none. And make sure that you go to Built.com and use the promo code LOCKEDON15 for 15% off your offer. That is LOCKEDON15 for 15% off your offer. As we're wrapping up today's episode of Locked on HBCU, I want to talk about North Carolina A&T because I believe they just had a statement win over Bryant. And I know a lot of people aren't going to agree with that. And that's OK, because I stand on this. I think that this is a statement win, but not for any of you, not for me, not for anybody who was not in that locker room. I think this was a statement win for everybody internally. And North Carolina a and because I know there's some people who are going to negate the idea that's a, that is a statement victory i was saying well that's bryant bryant you know whatever it's bryant oh i don't care (laughs) i don't care who it is because bryant deployed a game plan that they strongly felt would deter success for for uh, north carolina a and t and honestly there's some people who might have thought it would as well now maybe you think because it's bryant it didn't work i don't care because i think that sometimes you need to show that you can do it they always say that confidence is the result of displayed execution something like that i just butchered that i know i butchered it but the idea is that you gain confidence by proving to yourself you can do something over and over and over whatever the exact words are is the exact words okay but i thought that 
Coach Washington called this a character win for a couple of reasons, right? So he mentioned how it was one of those seesaws where it could have gone either way. And I thought we hung in there. We fought and we plugged away and we stayed together and unified. We finished with a complete ball game. And for that, I'm very grateful. I can rock with that. However, I'm going to call it a statement win because they did what they needed to do to take away Basial Toot. He still got his because Tootin' that guy. However, they did what they needed to to take him out, uh, take him out of the game. And uh, Coach Washington talked about that as well. He said as the game went on, Brian did a good job making adjustments, putting eight in the box at the right time, and caused us to have some difficulties moving the football. Isn't he telling you, I want to run the ball? This is him straight up telling you. They put eight in the box and caused us some difficulties for us to continue to move the football. Well, you ain't putting eight in the box to stop the pass. And that's one thing I'll say about run-dependent teams versus pass-dependent teams. I feel like the typical way that people try to stop them is so much more effective when you're talking about run-dependent uh, run teams, right? You put eight in the box, it's so, harder to, so much harder to run than if you put six DBs on the field and say, all right, we're going to stop you from passing. There's just so many different coverages that – Offensive coordinators know their way around. I just feel like you see so much more success in pass dependent teams when these defenses try to stop them. So I thought it was impressive because you could have been languid, languid, there we go, and you could have just tried to keep beating your head against that brick wall and say, I'm going to break through with Tootin eventually. You gave him 27 carries. He had 114 yards. He ended up going for 4.2 yards per carry. So that was a good game. Don't get me wrong. He still had 100 for the fourth game in a row now. So you, you can't take it away from him. You can't sit here and say he's not a good back. You understand why they're trying to stop him. He's seventh in the country in rushing yards. We know why they're trying to take him away. But when you do that, how are you going to react? You got to have a touchdown pass. And when the game's close and you have to put it away, you look at Fowler and you say, all right, I need you to throw me one. And he throws me one, a 25-yard touchdown pass. And you look at the defense. The defense got after it. You look at Prunty, he had two interceptions. Right. They forced four interceptions on the day. These are plays that you need. If you as an opponent are going to try to take away my best quality, I need my other qualities to step up. And in a game and maybe it had to be against Brian, maybe Brian is the right exact or uh, the exact right response. When I say they did this against Brian, maybe that's what you need to do. However, I don't care who it was against. I care that it happened. And because it happened now, the defense, the third string quarterback, they all have the confidence to say, well, if you're going to try to bottle up Tootin, I'm going to come through and I'm going to show you what I can do. So now, if you know I can do something, you're a little less concerted to stopping Tootin every single play because you understand selling out to stop the run is going to leave you vulnerable to the arm. And you also understand that the, you could get into a defensive game. That has nothing to do with Tootin. That just has to do with the Aggies being comfortable. But overall, I think this was a statement win. Because it told you, I don't have to run the ball down your throat for 150 yards. I can beat you in different ways. Specifically with defense, in not great passing, but well-timed passing. And I think that was an important thing for North Carolina a and to, to learn. And they did it before they even got into conference play for real. This was just their first game. So they learned it early. Campbell, watch out. Speaking of Campbell, that's who we're going to be talking about tomorrow. They absolutely decimated North Carolina Central. It was a really tough game, and it all went down in the first quarter. We're going to, or first half. We're going to talk about that game and then also the ramifications that expand beyond just North Carolina. I cannot wait for this. So I appreciate you for making us your first listen of the day. Let's wrap it up so we can get to tomorrow for your second listen of the day. Make sure you're checking out our conference shows, Locked on ACC with friend of the Cooper, or friend of the Cooper, friend of the show, Candace Cooper. I was getting ahead of myself. Um, then also you have Chris Gordy on Locked on SEC, Locked on Big 12, Locked on Pac-12, and Locked on Sunbelt. The conference shows, in my opinion, don't tell nobody I said this, but we the best on the, on the Locked on Network. I, I said it, but all right, just keep that between you and I, all right? But in the meantime, in between time, if you're looking for me, you can find me on Twitter at South Exclusives. Until the next time that we hear each other, family, take care. Stay blessed. Peace.